Hey guys, Heavy on Sport 5 here. Now, last week I did three videos. One was serious. One was me finishing up a promise I made to y'all that I was trying to have it done before the new year, which I failed. But I did get it done. You can't say I didn't get it done. You probably ain't, don't watch it since it's an hour, 15 minutes long. But I did get it done. Um, and the last one, I guess I should do an apology because I said that the green lanterns lack imagination and apparently i was wrong specifically about the one john stewart who um someone who commented on the video said that he is considered called the architect he basically creates stuff from a summer topic level and works his way out hence why his constructs rarely rarely to never break because he has so much detail put into the way they're built. Um, I never made an argument against how powerful they are. So, yeah, I, but like I said before, it all based on the limitations of the person writing the story. Um, and a lot of times what I've seen comes from people who are uh, writing for the DC Universe animation not from what they do in the other cases um so the comic books i have i wasn't as in-depth in what happened in the comic books as what happened then i mean happened in the animation so i was not aware of him being considered architect or all the other things that um the comment said but that's besides the point i figured i'd go back and talk about beer knock and Zaheer and Yurichi, you know, I haven't talked about them in about two months. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Last time about the where we were was that Birnock had got arrested. I don't think I told you why Birnock got arrested. Birnock started a bar fight. Um and missed his bar fight. He um when he got arrested, um he had to do um, community service, thanks to Zaheer. And the reason Zaheer did that was because he knew that uh, Birnok was an actual uh, player character. So he wanted to try and he figured that was a good way to shoo him in. There. I didn't know how in the world they were going to get the party together. But sometimes it you need a little bit of metagaming like that to try and get a team together, but uh, they never could control what Beardot did. Uh, there was a situation where after the whole thing happened, oh, amongst all that stuff happened, I'm sorry, Beardot did get arrested. But there was another player character that came to the game. His name was Durin uh, Wolf. And Durin was a rogue. And I probably should go through all the people that I have now in the campaign. You have Zahiri, who is still a Black Blade Magus. You have Yurichi, who is a uh, Ifrit Sorceress. You have Birnok, who is a Dwarven Cleric. I don't know of what religion he did, but I'm pretty sure that, yeah. Um, uh, then you have, um, uh, then you had Duran Wolf, who was a rogue, who wanted to do some other stuff. And that's where his story comes in this. He wanted to own a brothel. I wasn't the one who planned it. His, uh, his person decided to do it. So, Duran is trying to start a brothel. So while Birnok is starting a fight in the Dwarven Bar, you have Birnok. I mean, not Birnok. Duran at the high end Elvish uh, bar where everybody's a little bit more fancy and stuff. They're wearing nice clothes. You know, they don't have fights there. But he's in there trying to find ladies to try and interest into working for him in his brothel he has a good charisma so he can talk a lot of people into doing stuff so he's working on trying to talk to this one girl and come find out that she is 
belongs to someone else. She's not a uh, girl of the night yet. Uh, she actually was, I guess you could say, a gold digger. I created a character, an NPC, kind of a fool to him, named, I just called him the Major. He, because, you know, you were living someplace like that, you'd have some people that consider themselves old war dogs that if they're called for, they will go off and fight, or they said that they went off and fought, and they were um, great heroes because, not because they asked to the fall, but because they were there when certain fights happened. And that was what the major was. So he tried to intimidate Durin with his abilities. And Durin, mind you, was very polite in the way he dealt with the situation, which was cool. And so they kind of just left it at that. But Durin didn't still wanted that girl. So uh, somehow in a magical stupor, um, there was a situation where Durin got with the rest of the party. So now you have Durin, Yurichi, uh, Zahiri, and Birnop together. And they're trying to find a job. Uh, Durin to get a job just so he can, I guess, make a little bit of money. Birnop working off his community service that Zahiri gave him. Zahiri because he wants to be the hero of the city. Uh, is my best answer for him. Who knows. Uh, but yeah. They decide to go off. and Because they heard about a attack that was done. To the southeast of the city. So they're going to the southeast city. And they run into a large boule. Now. Boules if you don't know. Dig in the ground. They're. Very hard headed, they're not magical creatures, they're just big, burly creatures. And I guess you could say Zahiri was somewhat intimidate, intimidated by them because you know it's a large creature, so he figures that we probably need help with this. And so he sends Durin off to try and find somebody to get help. Well, Durin comes up with the idea of how will they know that it was a councilman that said this. And so, Zahiri gives Durin his crest, showing that he's a part of the council. Durin runs off, and while within about 30, 40 minutes, of him, I mean, not 30, 40 minutes, but 30, 40 seconds of him walking off, they beat the bully. They didn't even need anyone else's help. Um, but Durin is gone. Durin is gone with the crest and he runs off and finds um, the major. Still, I believe he found them at home because he found out where he lived at and went to him and told him that, hey, this councilman has told me to call you. There was a, a battle that happened to the east of town and he needs you to run out there and uh, to save the day. And because he had the curse of a person from uh, council members, Major nervously not knowing what to do because he's never really been in a situation like that before, runs off, to, gets his horse, gets his weapons, and rides off and is at the end is never seen from again ish um so yeah so during after that point proceeds to talk to um this lady and try and talk her into being a part of his brothel she's somewhat worried about the major so you know it's a not a big deal uh beer knock at the same time though going back to him has gotten drunk a couple times you know he's constantly drunk he's constantly belittling the el uh, half elf is a here so um they decide to have a fight and 
Alex decides to mediate the fight. So Alex is there watching the fight as these two fight. And it's, I guess you consider this an epic fight. They're fighting each other and Zahiri loses. And it's not because Zahiri was terrible, but because the cleric was able to heal himself. And so, and also the amount of physical damage he was able to do to him too. So, uh, uh, there was a lot of stuff dealing with prep time too. They, the first few rounds between them was them buffing themselves so that they could fight the other one. Um, and so after that fight, there were, I guess you say some tensions between the two. Um, at one point. Alex sees, saw that it was being somewhat of a problem to have this drunken dwarf around. And so Alex, my NPC, who's an ancient, yeah, he, he, he's like an elder elf. Besides for the hell of it, just to uh, give Birnak a drink, uh, drink that makes it to where it purifies uh, purified water, I believe is what it was. So every time he would try and drink alcohol, it would become water. So he couldn't get drunk anymore. So Birnock was not happy with that. Birnock was not happy with Alex. Birnock was not happy with anyone at that point. Um, he was just waiting for the day he was able to drink again. And so... They did some adventures with Beer Knock where he um, he adventured with them. And I didn't know the player who was playing him had a... Uh, the reason that he had Beer Knock was... He was hoping... He was expecting Beer Knock to die. He wanted to test me out as a DM to see what I would do to um, his character. And I kind of let him have free reign of it. The whole... And... I know it, this could go on the idea of bad moments of DM because I took away his alcohol. And it wasn't because I took away his alcohol because I just didn't like him being drunk. But it was that um, some people in the game, if I was playing like Alice and stuff like that, saw that he was creating more problems in the city than regular people were. Like... Being constantly drunk in town, he kind of did a lot of stuff. Um, and Beer Knock didn't last that long, I want to say. Beer Knock lasted probably about a month or two. Um, about that time, we started to get new people into the group, and Beer Knock was then a part of history. Um, the last thing that Beer Knock did was... There was a situation where people were coming in with um, bite marks on them. Um, it looked like they had been bitten and sucked dry. And so it seemed like an epidemic because it was so many people being caught like this. And the clergy were coming in and they called in Beer Knock because... He was a cleric, so they called him in to try and help to uh, uh, remove curse and stuff like that. He helped for a second, but it wasn't that long. Um, the and there was a situation where there was somewhat of a unofficial fight between him. And the half elf, he, the half elf did something in spite or by joke, and Beer Knock kind of stole all his, uh, stole his money, like knocked him out and took all his money, and coming out for it, apparently with no bag of holding. The half elf had been carrying around about fifty thousand gold worth of uh, worth of gold. We thought, but 
And so I'm like, wait a minute, that's a lot of gold to have around. So he actually, we changed it into that he had 50,000 gems that were worth, I mean, he had gems that were worth the equivalent of 50,000 gold. Um, love that exchange rate, right? being able to exchange stuff like that. And so that's what we did. We gave him crystals that were in gems that were worth about that much. So what happened was that Birnock stole all his stuff and proceeded to, um, he started trying to run away from him. Like, he had already knocked him out for a second. So while he was knocked out, um, somebody finally did wake him up and come find out that Birnock had apparently hid all his money. He, and so, like, he dug holes and put the money into the holes and hid it away to where no one could find it. And so uh, when, and also he was doing plane shifts and stuff like that. He was teleporting himself. And after a while, um, I believe he found out that his powers weren't working anymore. And the reason his powers weren't working anymore was because his alignment has changed. He, if I remember correctly, his character was supposed to be a neutral good character. But I, as a DM, could not explain why a neutral good character is stealing and attacking an a innocent person. And so his alignment changed from neutral good to true neutral, which meant he required an atonement. So he kind of lost his powers. Um, he was arrested again for what he did to um, to what he did to um, Zahiri. And when he was arrested this time, Alex put him as his charge. So now Birnock works for Alex and is being given an atonement so that he could eventually get his uh, powers back. And that led to a new character coming in named Huggins and the rest of the crew. They all came at about the same time. And that's why I'm going to leave it at here. I hope y'all enjoyed this and I'll catch you later.